preview of the Republican response to the January 6th hearings, but for Republicans in moderate districts, the continued reminder of Trump's behavior on January 6th does not do them any favors. David Drucker is here, senior political correspondent for the Washington Examiner. Uh, behind his shoulder is his book, In Trump's Shadow, The Battle for 2024 and the Future of the GOP, which is one of the reasons we're uh, happy to have you on about uh, this issue. Uh, is there a, another battle, not just that we're seeing play out on the January 6th committee, but on the side within Republicans about whether to relitigate 2020 or whether to move on? Well, there is, Leland, but maybe not in the way you think. It's Donald Trump who wants to continue to relitigate 2020, and it's Republicans in Congress who desperately want to move on and focus on the future when, when voters are focused and when they are focused on inflation and all of the other kitchen table issues that are front and center for voters. Republicans do very well politically, and that's where they want to be right now. Are there Republicans who are behind the scenes quite angry that they did not put anybody on the committee uh, to act as uh, rebuttal counsel, if you will? Well, there is a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on, but I can guarantee you, well, I shouldn't say guarantee, but I am sure that if Kevin McCarthy had played ball and there was a bipartisan House Select Committee involved in this investigation that was a real committee with real bipartisan input from the standpoint of all Republicans, not just Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, that at this point there would be a lot of complaining that McCarthy should have never allowed it. He should have pulled Republicans from the committee because that way voters wouldn't be able to assume that what the committee was doing was legitimate and real and the facts that they were uncovering are legitimate and real. Having said all of that, that's exactly what is happening, regardless of what people think of the political makeup of the committee. Fair enough. And there, there, there is this, there is a Monday morning quarterback in that McCarthy was in this damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of spot uh, on the issue. Obviously, we know what President Trump thought of it. How much have you been paying attention to the hearings? Um, overall, a lot, 58 percent, not very much, not at all, 41 percent. Democrats are paying attention to this. Uh, Republicans are not. Independents, I thought this was interesting. 55% say a lot, some. Uh, are we to believe that there's anything that has happened in the committee hearings that you're hearing from Republicans that's come out that they're scared of for November? No. I think that we need to differentiate between the substantive work and findings of the committee and the political ramifications of those uh, substantive findings and what's being uncovered. We are learning a lot about January 6th and former President Trump's uh, attempt to overturn the 2020 election uh, that wasn't known previously, that could rise to the level of criminal indictments, whether or not you go after a former president's another story. And so I think the committee has been very useful in painting a much fuller picture of what happened, why it happened, and potentially shedding light on illegal activity or very questionable activity. However, when you look ahead to 2022 and the midterm elections this fall, I don't see any political ramifications in the short term for Republicans. I think they're still on track to, to win back the majority in the House. They have a really good chance of winning back the Senate majority. Mm -hmm. And I think the question is, do they win governing majorities or are they gonna be small majorities? I think, Leland, this is the kind of thing that may have some political legs in the 2024 presidential race in that context. But people are simply too unhappy about things that are very important to them, their economic situation, how they feel about the direction of the country. I think for for this to upend the political trends for this year. You say that I only got about 30 seconds, but I want to get you on this because you think about, for example, Georgia in the Senate race, which they Republicans would need to win to take the Senate. Uh, Raphael Warnock's up by 11 points, 55-44 over Herschel Walker, uh, the Republican, and yet uh, President Biden's underwater by 33 points, uh, a 40-plus point spread that uh, Raphael Warnock's out cooking his coverage. Uh, you got to get a lot out of the, Jan out of the January 6th committee uh, to turn that around, don't you? Look, I, I just don't think, th I don't think that what, the January 6th committee is going to produce, as damning as it might be, 
is going to change opinions of President Biden's leadership this late in the game in this election cycle. And I think a lot of these races mm -hmm. where Democrats have initial leads, especially incumbents, you're going to see this tighten. And if it's a wave election, we've seen this before, a lot of these races may be close, but in a wave, they tend to all go one direction. Yeah, no, that, 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 that is an excellent point. And look, and at a certain extent, we saw that uh, the breakaway wave happen uh, in 2020 uh, the other way. Uh, David, it's great to see you as always. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Leland. All right. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.